zero ignition. With a burst of flames and an ear-splitting roar, a rocket blasts its way into the sky. Every rocket launch is different and exciting. What might we find in outer space? Perhaps a new star or planet? And what new things will we learn? Astronauts live and work in space every day. I'm Jennifer W. Lopez. I'm a space technologist, and I love to study anything about outer space. I manage technologies and items to send to the moon, from robots to rovers to cameras. We call them lunar payloads. And before this, a couple years ago, I identified, developed, and fostered space-based commercial research and development for the International Space Station U.S. National Laboratory. Since I was very young, I've been curious about space and astronauts. It's a job that I love. I like to think that it's really out of this world. Wow, I love to learn about outer space. Someday, I hope to be an astronaut and to take a spaceship to Mars. Maybe somewhere even more exciting. And we're so glad you've joined us as we explore the world of astronauts. So let's start exploring. Where should we start? That is a great question. Space is big, really big. And there's a lot to talk about. But we have to start somewhere. Yes, we sure do. So let's start right where all space exploration starts in our very own solar system. Sounds good to me. Track one, our solar system. Uh, Miss Lopez, I'm not sure what that means. What is our solar system? Our solar system is the sun and everything that moves around it, including our own planet, the Earth. Eight big planets, including Earth, take paths that travel around the sun. Some planets are small and rocky, others are huge, and made mostly of gases. But they're all part of our solar system, and so are all of their moons. Moons? Some planets have more than one moon? Yep, some planets have lots of moons. Planets and moons are just some of the things in our solar system. There are other things too, like asteroids and comets. That's a lot of things. Yep. But our sun is at the center of it all. So let's start there. Ready, set, go! The sun is a star. What? Like the stars I see in the sky at night? But they look so little and twinkly. They don't look as big as the sun. Some of those stars you see are even bigger than our sun. And our sun isn't too small either. Over a million Earths could fit inside of it. Okay, but they're definitely not as bright as the sun. Sometimes the light is so bright that it hurts my eyes. Now is a good time to remind you of something. You should never, ever look at the sun, even with sunglasses on. It could really hurt your eyes. I'll remember that. No looking at the sun. The reason our sun looks brighter than those other stars is that it's closer. In fact, it's the closest star to Earth. How close is it? Oh, about 93 million miles away. To help you picture that, think of it this way. If you could drive to the sun in a car, it would take more than 170 years to get there. That's close? When we're talking about outer space, that's close. And it's a good thing the sun's not any closer because the sun is hot, very hot. 
our sun is so hot, if it was closer to the earth, it would be too hot for us to be talking about it right now because we wouldn't be here. It would be too hot on the earth for anything to survive. And if it were too far away, it would be too cold. But at 93 million miles away, the sun's warmth and light is just right. Perfectly warm enough to keep plants and animals on earth alive, including you and me. Just right. That's like the story about Goldilocks and the three bears. That's a great way to think about it. And as far as we know, Earth is the only planet in our solar system that has life. Oh, that's disappointing. Don't be too disappointed. We're always discovering new things. Maybe you'll be the one that finds life on another planet someday. In the meantime, let's learn more about planets. What do you say? Do we have a deal? Okay, deal. Great. Let's get moving by talking about how planets are always moving. Each planet moves in an orbit. An orbit is a path around something. Planets in our solar system move around the sun. So we say that they orbit the sun. Now close your eyes and imagine yourself walking around something like a chair. Or if you're in a place you can do it, give it a try. You can walk around anything. It doesn't have to be a chair. Okay, done. I walked around a pillow that was on my floor. Hooray! You have just orbited around your pillow. Tell me about your path. What shape was it? It was kind of round, like a loop. Good. A planet's orbit is rounded. It's not a circle exactly, but it is round. Each planet in the solar system orbits in a roundish path around the sun. Including the Earth? Yep, including the Earth. Every planet has its own orbit, and every planet's orbit is different. It takes a whole year for Earth to follow its orbit all the way around the sun. How many times do you think you have been all the way around the sun? Here's a hint. Wait, that's a birthday party. Oh, I've had five birthdays. So, five? Excellent. The Earth takes about 365 days, what we call one year to move around the sun one time. Other planets take different amounts of time to make one orbit around the sun. But that's not the only way planets move. They are also always spinning, kind of like a top. Earth spins at about 1,000 miles an hour. That's about five times as fast as a race car. So you're saying right now the ground I'm standing on is spinning, like a top. But I usually get dizzy when I spin around. I don't feel dizzy. I don't feel anything. Luckily, you can't feel the Earth spin. That's because you, me, the floor, everything is spinning too. We're all on the earth and we're all moving together. And we all make one complete spin in about 24 hours, what we call one day. So 365 days for one orbit and 24 hours for one day. Yep, other planets have days that are longer while others are shorter. It just depends on how fast they spin. Hmm, it sounds like planets are really different from each other. They are. So let's take a look at each special planet, starting with Mercury, the closest planet to the sun. If we could travel to Mercury in a spaceship, it would take about five months to get there. If it's closest to the sun, I bet it's unbelievably hot all of the time. I bring my sunscreen. It makes sense to think that way, but that's not the case. The days on Mercury are really, really hot. Temperatures can climb to 806 degrees Fahrenheit, which is over four times the temperature of boiling water. I'm sweating just thinking about how hot that is. 
but the nights are the opposite. Incredibly cold. Temperatures crash down, way down, to hundreds of degrees below zero when it's dark on Mercury. Whoa, that's more than just chilly. Mercury is small and quick. Remember how we said it takes 365 days for the Earth to orbit the sun? Yep, one year. Well, Mercury does it in only 88 days. So you're saying that my birthday would come a lot faster if we could live on Mercury? I don't think I would want to, though. It's too hot and too cold. <laughs> okay, then let's move on to Venus. Venus is about the same size as Earth. Venus is also Earth's closest neighboring planet. It would only take about four months of travel to get there. Only? That's still a long time. Don't worry. There's no plan to send people to Venus anytime soon. It would make for a pretty miserable trip. Venus has a lot of very thick clouds in its sky. The clouds hold in heat like a blanket, making Venus very hot. In fact, temperatures on the rocky surface of Venus make it the hottest planet in our solar system. Even hotter than Mercury? Yep, even hotter than Mercury. Yikes. Yikes is right. A spaceship with a camera helped us take a peek beneath that blanket of clouds. The pictures it sent back to Earth show that most of Venus is covered in lava, the kind of melted rocks that come from volcanoes. Doesn't sound like a good place for a hike at all. Fortunately, you can hike on the next planet. Uh, Earth, right? Yep, we're standing on the third planet from the sun, the fifth largest planet in the solar system, and the first planet from the sun that has a moon. Oh, yeah. I was wondering why you didn't say anything about Mercury or Venus having moons. I know the next planet, Mars, has two moons. Yes, yes it does. How did you know that? Mars is my favorite planet. Cool. What else do you know about Mars? Lots. I know it's called the red planet because it's kind of rusty red in color. And I know it has volcanoes, big ones. 